Welcome to the world where we teach you real English in an easy and fun way. This is the third in a series of videos where we are exploring with you all the tenses in English. It might seem like a lot to learn all the tenses in the English language, but actually it's not as difficult as it seems. Follow our videos and you will walk away with a much better understanding of English grammar. We're going to give you loads of examples so that you can learn them and use them yourself. Before we start, we kindly ask you to click on the subscribe button so you never miss out on our valuable content and our channel can continue growing. Your support means the world to us. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. In this video, we're going to look at how to express the future in English. Most learners of English think that will is what we use for the future. But here is a surprise for you. Actually, this is not entirely true. There are a number of different ways of referring to the future in English without using will. It is important to remember that in English, we express more than simply the time of the action or event in the future. I know this sounds strange, but the structure we use depends on the function of what we want to say, whether we are talking about future arrangements, plans, predictions, etc. So let's look at how we do this. Try not to think about future tenses in your own language. Keep an open mind and follow the structure of how it works in English. So I'm going to give you examples of sentences in the future and you can try to guess what tense it is. These are all tenses we looked at in our previous videos. So if you miss them, please go look them up. Here we go with the first sentence. We have a lesson next Monday or the train arrives at 6.30 tomorrow morning or the holidays start next week and last it's my birthday tomorrow. What tense is have, arrives, start, is? Yes, exactly, the present simple. When we know and are sure about the future, we normally use the present simple. We use it for something that is scheduled. So as you can see, a future event and no will. What about the next set of sentences? Guess which tense it is. I'm playing football tomorrow. They are coming to see us next Tuesday. We are having a party at Christmas. What tense is I'm playing, they are coming, we are having? Yes, exactly, the present continuous. We can use the present continuous for the future for plans or arrangements. So that means something you have organized and planned and you are pretty sure it's going to happen. And again, as you can see here too, we are using a future and no will. Now let's move on to something that looks like the present continuous, but it isn't. Look at these examples. I'm going to drive to work today or they are going to move to Manchester. The structure of this future is be plus going to plus the infinitive. We use be going to for plans or intentions in the future. Just to clarify, we use the present continuous more for arrangements with other people and B plus going to plus the infinitive for intentions. Sometimes it's important to choose the right structure, but often we could use either because many events are both arrangements and intentions. Here is an example. Anne's coming for lunch. This is an arrangement between Anne and her friend. Anne's going to come for lunch. This is Anne's intention. 
Of course, these are both correct. We also use be going to to make predictions based on evidence we can see. Here is an example. Be careful, you're going to fall. This means I can see that you might fall. Or look at those black clouds, it's going to rain. Now look at this example. What are you going to do next year? I'd like to go to university. As you can see here too, we are talking about the future without using will. We often use verbs such as would like, plan, want, mean, hope, expect to talk about and express the future. We plan to go to France for our holidays or George wants to buy a new car. When we are not sure about the future, we can use modal verbs such as may, might and could. Here are some examples. I might stay home tonight or I might go to the cinema. We could see Mary at the meeting. She sometimes goes. Last of the options for expressing the future without will is to use should if we think there's a good chance of something happening. We should be home in time for tea or the game should be over by 8 o'clock. So you see, you can express the future in English without knowing any future tenses. It was easy, wasn't it? Well, that's it for today's video. But before we end this video, I would like to tell you that the secret to language learning is to know how to use the things you know in the best possible way. Quality is better than quantity. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you learned something useful. Watch out for our next videos where we are going to learn about the classic future tenses you can find in textbooks and conditional tenses. Remember, mastering a language is all about practice and perseverance. So keep watching, keep practicing and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how we grow as learners. And remember, as we say in English, practice makes perfect. If you like this video, please hit the like button and we hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.